Hello again everyone and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In a recent tutorial on this channel, I taught you guys all the basics of Systemd. In that video, I also covered some additional things, things that you might not be aware of even if you do have some knowledge on Systemd. Now that video seemed to be one of those that you guys really enjoyed, but at the same time, I also mentioned that there's some additional concepts that I also want to go over but those concepts would have to wait for a separate video. And this video is the first of those. In this video, we're going to go over systemd timers. Timers in systemd allow you to schedule a job or task to run at some point in the future. And this is not all that unlike cron, for example, something that I've gone over on this channel before, but timers in systemd give you additional features which we will be exploring in this video. In fact, in this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to fully understand systemd timers and also create them and use them in your daily workflow. Now, before I get into that though, I do need to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, Akamai Connected Cloud. If you're looking for a cloud provider that's affordable, flexible, and reliable, then look no further than Akamai Connected Cloud. With Akamai's cloud platform, you can spin up Linux servers quickly, and the platform contains all the features you'll need to deploy full-featured solutions. And using the marketplace, you could easily deploy applications such as Nextcloud, Rocket Chat, Mastodon, WordPress, Pi-hole, Plex, Jenkins, and many more. In fact, there's over 100 applications available in the marketplace. If you want to set up a custom Linux instance, you could do that too. All the popular Linux distributions are available on the platform, including, but not limited to, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and many others. In fact, even Arch Linux is available. So check out Akamai Connected Cloud with the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. First, it'll help support this channel, which I'll really appreciate. And it'll also get you $100 in starter credit to check out the platform. And thank you yet again to Akamai for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate it. Now with all of that out of the way, let's dive into timers and systemd. The first thing that you might be wondering is what systemd timers are in the first place, or if you already know what they are, and I did give you a brief summary earlier in the video, perhaps you're wondering what makes systemd timers better than cron jobs, or why you should learn this in the first place. First of all, for those that aren't already aware, cron jobs give you the capability of setting up a task to automatically run according to some sort of schedule. For example, you might want to run a script at midnight every single Friday or something like that, or at some sort of schedule that you come up with, and cron is a great way to do that. When it comes to what makes systemd timers better than cron jobs, here's the thing, they're not. The point of this video is to educate you on what systemd timers are and how you go about using them, so that way you can decide for yourself which one you should use. It's actually a great idea to learn them both, the best Linux administrators out there have a varied tool set, and both of these should definitely be part of that tool set. As far as what's different about systemd timers when compared to cron jobs, let's go over that right now. First of all, systemd timers are part of systemd while cron is more of a standalone thing. You could create cron jobs on systemd systems and you can also use cron jobs on non-systemd systems as well, but on the other hand, what you can't do is use systemd timers on non-systemd systems. If you are not sure whether or not your Linux distribution of choice contains systemd, you should probably pause this video, watch my earlier systemd video, and then after you're done watching that, you can continue on with this video. Now, you don't have to watch the previous systemd video in order to understand this one, but it does give you some additional background that might help you better understand systemd timers. When it comes to systemd timers, there's additional features when it comes to scheduling jobs that let you fine tune when they'll be reattempted when missed, the process priority, how likely a job run via a timer is to be killed via the out of memory killer, and more. And those additional features, among other additional features, are the main benefits of systemd timers. However, with that additional flexibility comes added complexity. Cron jobs end up being much simpler to understand and implement, while systemd timers end up being a bit more involved. That's not to say systemd timers are hard to learn and understand, 
That's not the case at all. There's just more to learn in regard to systemd timers when compared to cron jobs. Another potential benefit when it comes to systemd timers is that, well, considering it's part of systemd, systemd related commands that you already know can be used to check the status of systemd timers and also manage systemd timers. And this makes it much faster to learn if you already have knowledge on systemd. And this is also why I recommended earlier that you watch my systemd video first, although again, that's not required. Now, there's definitely more that sets systemd timers apart from cron jobs than that, but you'll automatically start to understand the differences more as we work through hands-on examples during this video. In the next section, we'll start to dive into that topic, but before I close out this section of the video, I'd like to answer a quick question that many of you probably have at this point. When should you use cron jobs and when should you use systemd timers? Well, my honest answer is to use whichever one fits the needs of your current project or fits in better within your environment. But to help you decide, consider these tips. First, regardless of which you use, the resulting task that's being executed won't run any faster on one when compared to the other. If you use a distribution that doesn't feature systemd as its init system, the choice is made for you. Systemd timers require systemd. If you're pressed for time or you're otherwise wanting to schedule something simple to run on a schedule, cron jobs are almost always faster and simpler. On the other hand, if you want to get even more technical, such as specifying that missed job should be run during the next boot, setting up a job to bypass the out of memory killer completely, or scheduling a job with more granular control than just simply a day and time, in any of those cases, systemd timers will almost always be your best bet. If you want to add automation to a solution that interacts with systemd as part of its internal functionality, then in that case, systemd timers are the best way forward. In summary though, systemd timers integrate better within your environment if you already use systemd and offer you additional features that cron itself doesn't offer. On the other hand, cron jobs are easier to understand and simpler to implement. Which one you end up using will ultimately come down to the complexity of the task at hand and which of the two solutions are a better fit for your project on a case-by-case -case basis. Now it's time to see systemd timers in action. And we'll also work through some hands-on examples in this section to help you learn it. And we'll begin with a very simple example. Let's say that we have a web server and we want to send the message of the day to our users on a regular schedule. What we'll do is look at how we'll achieve that with a systemd timer. The first thing we'll do though is test out the command that we want to schedule. We need to make sure that the command we want to run or the command that we want the systemd timer to run is a command that works in the first place. And for this example, we can use the wall command to send a message to users that are logged into our system. And the syntax for that is very simple. We type wall and then hello world, just like that. As we could see, it printed a message onto the screen like you see right here. And the thing is, every user that's logged into the system will see the same message. On a side note, if you were curious how to send a message to everyone on the system, well, now you know. However, a message of the day would be a great example in and of itself, but let's make it a bit more fun. Let's try this command right here. We'll type curl wttr.in question mark format equals three. So I'll press enter and check this out. We get the weather report for our current area. Now the thing is though, this server is located in Toronto, Canada, but I'm in the United States. The Toronto data center when it comes to Akamai's connected cloud is the closest one to me geographically, even though I'm not in that country. So anyway, that's why I received Canada's report right here. That doesn't matter though. As you can see here, we were able to pull a weather report from WTTR.in. This is something that I covered in a previous video. I'll leave a card for that video right about here. But this is the command right here that I want to send to everyone on the system. Maybe I want to give everyone today's weather report and I'm going to do that by combining this with the wall command. The resulting command will mean that everyone on the system will get the weather report like I just mentioned, but what we're also going to do is schedule this with a systemd timer. So now let's see an example of using the wall command to send that weather report to everyone. Just like earlier, 
I'll type wall just like that. And then a dollar sign in parentheses. And inside the parentheses, I'll type the same command again. As you can see, I was able to send the weather report as a wall message. How cool was that? And this is the command that I used right here to achieve that. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a subshell. That's what the dollar sign and parentheses represents here. The command inside those parentheses is going to be run inside a subshell. And then whatever that command creates or executes or the output of that command is, is going to be presented to the wall command, which is then shown to everyone. So let's go ahead and see what we'll have to do to automate this and schedule this with systemd. So what we'll do is create two unit files. In fact, I have them both saved right here. I have a weather report service file and a weather report timer file. These are both units. And as I went over in the systemd video, we have units in systemd. Systemd works with units. Service is a type of unit. And also timer is a type of unit. If you're curious about the relationship between units and service files, now you know. Anyway, I have these two files right here, so let's open them up and check them out. And first, we'll take a look at the service file. In addition, I'm also going to have all of this code in the description down below. There's going to be a link down there to the official blog post for this video. And inside that blog post, you'll be able to copy and paste all the commands that I'm using in this video. And you could also grab a copy of the service file and timer file as well. So let's go through this file right here to make sure that we understand what it's doing. In the unit section, we are defining the unit itself. We're giving it a description, nothing unusual there. We want this to start after network online. And the reason why is because, well, the system can't pull a weather report if the server is offline. Now you'll see later that this designation probably doesn't matter, but I figured I would add it just to show you this because it's absolutely a thing you can do to make a unit depend on something else, in this case, the network being online. Next, we have the service section. And we only have one line here, exec start, and that's the command that's going to be executed when the service starts. Now, keep in mind, we haven't even gotten to systemd timers yet. This is a service file, the same thing we went over in the previous video. So far, there's really nothing new here if you've seen that video. This is a standard service file. I'll show you the timer in just a moment, but I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Anyway, exec start is going to be the command that will run when we start the service. The default.target is essentially setting up the environment or some of the settings and options that will go into the service file. You could think of it almost like inheritance, but it gets outside the scope of this video but we just want some default settings and we are going to attach this to the default.target. So all of that applies to this as well. You really shouldn't have to look any deeper into this, but I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that relationship. Anyway, we'll close out of this and let's take a look at the timer file. And the timer file is a lot shorter, isn't it? Just like the service file, we have a description here. In this case, I put the same description, but we also have a timer section. More importantly, we have on calendar. On calendar is the most important part of a timer because that's how we tell the timer when it triggers. In this case, we have a range between Monday and Friday. So what we can glean from this is that this is going to run every day from Monday through Friday. Specifically, it's going to trigger at 10 a.m. So Monday at 10 a.m., Tuesday at 10 a.m., Wednesday at 10 a.m., and so on. Timers.target in the install section, there's really not all that much to say about that. It's similar to the default.target, but it's for timers instead. Again, that goes outside the scope of this video, but you shouldn't even have to know that in order to use timers. However, what is the relationship between these two files? How does the timer know what it's supposed to be doing? So the first thing that I want to point your attention to is the fact that both of these files have the exact same name, with the only exception being the extension at the end of the file name. And that's not a coincidence. That's actually, well, how you're supposed to do it. What happens is when the systemd timer triggers, 
it's going to look for a service file of the same name. That's how it knows which one that it's supposed to, well, execute. If it finds a service file with the same name when it triggers, it's going to start that service. And when it does, it's not all that different than when you start that service yourself. In fact, the relationship is going to become more clear in just a moment, but what I'm going to do is install the service file right now, and we're going to use it to see if it works. The first thing I'm going to do is run sudo chown. I'm going to make root the owner of the service file. Just like that. You can see the difference already. We may as well make that same change to the timer file since we'll have to do that anyway. So I'll just recall the previous command. I'll change it to timer and I'll press enter. So now that we have the permissions set, what I'm going to do is install the service file. And I could do that by running sudo and then mv for move. And what we'll do is move the weather report service and where we'll move that to is under slash etsy slash systemd slash system, just like that. Now, if I list the storage of that directory, we should see that our weather report service is there in that directory, and we do see that there at the end of the directory listing, as you can see here. Now, the next thing we'll need to do is let systemd know that we made a change to a unit file. So we'll run sudo and then systemctl. And then what we'll do is perform what's called a daemon reload. That'll just scan its directories and see what's changed. And obviously it'll find that new service file that we've added. We won't get any output and that's okay. Sorry to interrupt myself, but I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoy making this content for you guys. I have a ton of fun. If you enjoy the content that I produce, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. The thing is, producing content like this isn't cheap. So by giving back to the channel, you can help me make even more content for you guys. And to find out more about how you can support Learn Linux TV, what you could do is go to support.learnlinux.tv and there you'll find some of the ways that you can help support the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. But now what we could do is, well, interact with that service file. Just like any other service file, I mean, it is a service file, nothing's changed yet. We can run systemctl status weather report dot service. It's not running, and this is something that's going to run once and quit anyway. But as you can see here, there's nothing different when it comes to a systemd service that's going to be used with a timer. A service is a service, and the presence of a timer doesn't change that. And to prove that, what I could do is start the weather report service. So I just changed the status keyword to start, as you can see here. And I probably should have used sudo. See, I forget to do that sometimes too. I'll just break out of here and I'll run sudo systemctl start and then weather report dot service. And as you can see, it gave me the weather report and all I had to do was start the weather report service. So we know that the service file works, which is pretty cool. Now let's take one more look at the timer file. It's showing as unwritable because I changed the owner to root, but I don't care about that. I just wanted to show you this one more time. And as you can see, it's very simple. And also there's no command listed here. The service file has the command that we're going to use. We don't include that here. And we also don't need to tell it which service file that it needs to run when it triggers, because again, systemd is going to look for a service file with the same name. So there's not all that much going on here, although I will be expanding on this in just a moment. But first, let's install the timer. We could do that, similar to how we did that with the service file, by moving that file into slash etsy slash systemd slash system. And as you can see, we now have both the weather report service and timer there in that directory. Just like before, we'll run sudo and then systemctl, daemon reload. Again, that just lets it know that we added a file. And now what that allows us to do is run systemctl status weather report dot timer. Now, right now, there's nothing going on here. It's not even enabled. So that's interesting. 
We don't really get a lot of information here, but let's go ahead and enable the timer and see how the output changes. So now we can see that it's enabled, which is great, but we still don't get all that much information, do we? Well, just like with any other unit, I can also start the timer. But what do you think is going to happen? If I start the timer, does that mean it's going to start the service file as well? Well, let's find out. Let's check the status one more time. And the output definitely looks different, doesn't it? Under trigger, it tells me that it's going to trigger on Wednesday, August 9th of 2023 at 10 a.m. UTC. I didn't change the time zone of the server at all, which is why it's set to UTC in case you're curious. I do know that some people within my audience actually use UTC as their time zone. So if that's you, you probably didn't even notice anything different. But that's just one thing I wanted to mention that your local time zone or how you've configured your time zone in your server is going to help determine when this triggers. But what we can glean from this already is that we have to enable the timer if we want it to be active when the server boots, we have to start the timer if we want the countdown to start counting down. Otherwise, the timer will do absolutely nothing. Once we've started the timer, we can see that the output of status has changed. And more useful is the fact that it shows us the next trigger time. So if you want to find out when your systemd timer is going to trigger or when it's going to go off, then you could use the status keyword as I did right here to find out when you can expect this job to run next. Now, if I check the status of the service file again, nothing's really changed. The service file is disabled and it's also not running. Now, unlike most services that you might run with systemd, usually you'll have something that'll continue to run in the background this one here is just going to print the current, well, weather report, like I programmed it to do, and then exit. So status doesn't really give us much of a benefit here, although it does tell us whether or not the service is enabled. But you might be wondering though, do you have to enable the service? Will the timer be able to run the service if it's not enabled? Should you start it at boot time? I mean, what should you do with a service file? Well, first of all, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to enable it. And the ability for your service file to be enabled to start and all those other things that you can normally do with a service file, all of that stays exactly the same. And I do mean that the behavior is exactly the same. If I enable this service file, then it's going to print a weather report to everyone at boot time, just like any other service would start at boot time if it's enabled. So essentially, the presence of a timer doesn't change how a service behaves. As far as whether or not you should enable your service, that just depends on whether or not you want it to run at boot time. But anyway, now we have a service that will create a weather report for us, and we also have a timer that's going to trigger this particular service. And as you can see, it's going to be 13 hours from now until this triggers. Now the thing is though, I wanna actually see this work. I don't want to wait 13 hours and hope that I'm here at my computer to see this when it happens. I want to know that this is going to work. So what I can do is change the time to something like, I don't know, a few minutes from now to show you that it works. And right now, as you can see, when it comes to UTC, it's currently 8.01 PM. So what I'll do is add a few minutes to that. So what we'll do is run sudo and then nano. We have to use sudo now to edit our service file and our timer now that we changed it to be owned by root. And we'll edit the timer. And on calendar is Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Now, since the time is currently 8 p.m. when it comes to UTC, I'm going to change this accordingly. So what I'll do is change this to eight o'clock. I'll also add a few more minutes to it. So it's currently UTC 802. Just to be on the safe side, I'll just change it to 804 to give it a couple more minutes here. I'm going to save the file. I'm going to exit. Then I'll run sudo systemctl 
daemon reload again. Next, we'll check the status of our timer. And you can see that there's 17 seconds left. So it's going to run, well, any time now. We can see that it did run. But the thing is though, so far we haven't seen any functionality from systemd timers that give us any kind of edge on cron jobs. In fact, it did the exact same thing as a cron job could do with a lot more complexity, a lot more lines of code. In fact, there were two files that we had to create to create this timer. We had to create a timer and a service file. So that's what I meant by this being more complex when compared to cron jobs. But what we're going to see right now in our next example is how this starts to differ from cron jobs. So let's add some additional options to our timer file. We'll just open it back up again, just like we did before. And here's our timer. So the first option that I'm going to add to this file is going to be right underneath on calendar. Now, technically the order doesn't matter, but I often alphabetize things when I can. It's just a personal thing. I'm not going to make you do that. We're just going to make sure that what we're adding here is underneath the timer section. And the option that we're going to add is persistent. And we're going to set that to true. But what does that mean? So let's say, for example, that we are running updates on this server and it needed a restart. So we restart the server, but it just so happens to be around the same time that the weather report would have triggered. With a persistent option, what's going to happen is if a job is missed, it's going to be executed at the next available opportunity. In this case, when the server starts up the next time. However, there's one more option that I'm going to add here. On boot sec is the option that we'll be adding right here. And sec is short for seconds in this case, but you don't have to use seconds with this option. In fact, what I'm going to do is set this to 15 minutes. And what that's going to do for us is ensure that the server has been running for at least 15 minutes before this timer will trigger. We might add something like this to a server to prevent a job from running until well after the server has started all other services and performed any other missed jobs, the delay we're adding here will help ensure that this timer in particular is not going to get in the way of anything else that needs to run after the server starts. Now there's definitely other options that we can add to this file, but what I wanna do right now is take a break from that and take a look at the on calendar option again. As you recall, and as you can see right here, we set it to a range between Monday through Friday, but anyway, you understand what this time frame means, but how do you actually come up with a time frame that systemd will understand? Now the topic of time in systemd is a very large and complicated one. So what I'm going to do is stick to what I think is the absolute simplest method that I've found to figure out what to add to the on calendar line. And what I'll do right here is just type a simple timestamp. So here I have a timestamp that I completely made up off the top of my head. I'm not really sure why I chose 2032. Now it is a multiple of eight, so that might be why, but I don't know. That's just a date that I came up with. And that date right there is in the format that systemd understands. Now we could add this timestamp to the on calendar line as is, but if we do, this timer will execute specifically on that single day and never again. Now, to be fair, if time space repeated itself, it would have a chance to run again, assuming in that universe I created the same tutorial. But I don't know about you, I probably don't want to wait until 2032 for this to run. So let's go ahead and change this a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll change Monday, and I'll change that to an asterisk. And what that asterisk means is that it doesn't matter what that particular field equals, it doesn't really apply to when this is going to trigger. But that also doesn't really help us much, does it? What this means now is that this is going to run on this date and time, regardless of what the day of the week is. If I had the wrong day of the week, for example, then it wouldn't run at all. I mean, imagine waiting until 2032 and then it just doesn't happen. So I added an asterisk here just in case I, I don't know, didn't know what day of the week this fell on, but it still doesn't change when this is going to trigger. It's still going to trigger on that same day and never again. 
So let's narrow it down a little bit more. So now I've made the year an asterisk. Now at this point, with this timestamp right here, we're starting to get somewhere, aren't we? At this point, it's not the case that this is going to trigger once, you know, for eternity. Now it's going to trigger once a year. Every year on August 16th, as a matter of fact. Now, as you can see, I changed the month to an asterisk as well. And that's going to make this trigger even more often. Instead of once a year, it's now going to trigger every month on the 16th at 10.08. Now, if we want to set this to run every day, then we can write it like this. Now it's going to run every day at 10.08. Now, if I wanted to run this every hour, which would probably annoy everybody that's using this server, then I can change it accordingly, as you can see right here. If I was to remove this field here, the minute field, it's going to run this every minute. And the reason why it's every minute is because every time the seconds field is zero, zero, it's going to trigger the task to run. So again, that's the way that I like to come up with a timestamp with systemd. We simply start with a date, any date we want. I'll just use the same one again. And that's the way that I like to figure out timestamps with systemd. You essentially just change this to match whatever your desired format is. If you want this to run every year, every month, every day, every hour, you just change it accordingly. It's that simple. And once you're done, you copy this, whatever the resulting timestamp happens to be. And then we paste it into the on calendar field. Now I'm not going to type in a timestamp or anything right here myself. I think you get the idea. You simply change it to meet your needs and then you just paste it into this line. It's that simple. And there's our video. I hope this tutorial on systemd timers was helpful to you. If it was, please consider clicking the like button to let YouTube know how helpful this video was. And that might lead to more Linux on YouTube. I would really appreciate that. In the meantime, there's a bunch of content coming to this channel very soon that I can't wait for you to see. So definitely subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.